Hi, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Yes, yes. sir. Yeah. Yes. last class we were uh, <coughs> understanding uh, the functions like map okay and then uh, so map function you have understood till now and then you also understood the anonymous function lambda uh, how to use uh, the anonymous function lambda uh, i hope uh, map is clear to everyone so if you want to apply a common function to the list of inputs then uh, you can do that easily by using the map function <coughs> and uh, various examples we understood on that and then uh, uh, yeah this was uh, the function that we understood uh, lambda which is an anonymous function now if i want to ap apply this uh, function on all the uh, items which are present inside this list items then i can uh, do it something like this map so i'm calling uh, lambda x uh, because I, my intention was to find the squares of all these numbers so this is what i did and then uh, squared i was printing and finally uh, <clears throat> i just wanted to do it uh, in a single line uh, by reading the required uh, input from the keyboard so I did this uh, map int uh, input of split. This is what I did. So reading from the keyboard and splitting using space as the delimiter. And then for every item, uh, we were uh, applying, uh, casting it to integer. And then finally, uh, it was given as input to the lambda anonymous function, which was which used to square. And then again, used to map it to uh, 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 form a list. And it was assigned to the new list called as a squared. So uh, I think we also saw uh, the execution of all these things. And this is what the other thing which we were discussing. Uh, uh, this is uh, the list of functions. So it's not like uh, it should be only the numerical values in the list. Even your list can also be the list of functions. So my intention was to apply. <coughs> uh, yeah. So for i in range, see uh, i value is coming from the for loop for i in this range. So I am trying to apply this function, anonymous function uh, x of i, uh, uh, for each of the function which is there inside the function list, multiply and add. So uh, this functions uh, is uh, the list of functions now. Now what it will do, it will take the first item from the functions that is multiply. So and x value becomes multiply now. Okay. And multiply of i. So this function is called and uh, you get the result uh, x into x and the next item in functions is add. So uh, next x value will become add. It will call add of i. So this is called. I think I hope uh, I exec uh, executed this in the previous class also. Uh, and then we are finally uh, printing the value. And since this print value is inside the for loop, uh, every time this uh, uh, list is created we have uh, printing it uh, dynamically uh, there itself and every time this value is called on every iteration the the values which are there inside the list value gets updated so uh, i have started my uh, spider it is still starting so once it starts i'll show you the execution of this 
okay uh, let it get started so uh, i'll just go to the next slide <coughs> <coughs> next uh, uh, you understood map you understood and then you understood the anonymous function lambda so now filter okay uh, in my one of the example I showed you okay you know, so if I want to filter uh, uh, let me go back and show you okay, it's starting So one example was there, let me show you that. Yeah. So we were filtering here. No, no, this is searching, sorry. Yeah. So filtering in a loop. This is where uh, uh, we were uh, uh, filtering. That is, I just want to uh, find all uh, the elements which are greater than uh, 20. Okay. I was doing like this. Now this is not necessary. Okay. So there is something called as uh, filtering function which is available. I'll just go to yeah filter so as the name suggests filter creates a list of elements for which a function returns true here a short and concise example is there if you just go through this example you'll understand so now what we are writing instead of map I'm writing it as filter a totally different function so as usual I have the lambda and then foo foo is what the list of integers now every item from the list foo is passed as parameter to lambda so uh, in the first uh, thing uh, 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 the first item from the foo that is 2 is taken and given to lambda so uh, 2 modulus 3 we are finding and then comparing with equal to 0 okay this is 0 so comparing it with equal to 0 if this is true okay so then we have uh, uh, the element item added to the list in case if it is false we don't have it added to the list so now so without using the conditional statement if I can do it just by using the filter so what filter does if if the <coughs> result is true then it is added to the list if it is false it is skipped and it is not added to the list hope you understood with the filter Can I have your response, please? Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what uh, I think uh, the spider has started. So I'll show you the execution of this. Before this, uh, let me show you the execution of uh, the previous one. Yeah, this one. Okay. So two functions we have: one with the name multiply, another with the name add. So now this is, I'm, I've made a list of functions now. Name of the list is functions. I have multiply and add. You got to give the same name as uh, the function name. So function name is multiply. I've given it here. And another function name is add. I've given it here. And running a for loop from uh, i is equal to 0 to 4. Okay. Uh, you know this already because I've already explained. A range basically takes three arguments. But uh, uh, you can execute it with the one argument, two argument and three argument also. Uh, if you want to give three arguments, it is something like this. Uh, uh, the first argument is something like start and second argument is something like stop. And the third argument is something like um, uh, increment or decrement or basically it is called a step. So let me uh, yeah execute this first and later I'll highlight on range. See, now what we are doing. So it takes the first function from the list multiply. So x value is multiply now multiply of i is called uh, initially uh, i will be 0 a multiply of 0 it goes here multiply is called 0 into 0 so this is what the 0 answer you are getting and next the the item in the functions list is add okay add is taken so x value becomes add now add of 0 it comes here 0 plus 0 is 0 in the next iteration of the for loop i gets automatically incremented and it is 1 now now functions, so again it will start over from the multiply, multiply of 1, 1 into 1, 1, okay, and it is completely printed as a second list, separate list because this printf statement is inside the for loop, okay, 1, and next uh, in the functions list is add, add of 1, okay, this is called, so 1 plus 1, it becomes 2, it goes like this, okay, now, so this, uh, I'll write here, uh, 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 range, can be called with three arguments first is start 
and then stop and then uh, you have it uh, as uh, step you can call it as step something like this start as the initial value okay say for example i want to start the loop from zero and i want to stop when it becomes five so stop value is five and i want to increment it in uh, uh, one step okay i is equal to i plus one so i want to increment in step of two i is equal to i plus two i want to decrement so this is how it goes so if if you are calling it with only one argument then it is the start so now what we are doing, uh, uh, range is called with only one parameter, that is only start. So when you're giving, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is stop, sorry. Stop it is, so five is stop, okay, and uh, i is uh, the starting value. Uh, by default, it will start with zero. And uh, since uh, this step is not specified here, by default, it will increase uh, by one on every iteration, okay, this. Similarly, it can also be called with two parameters. Okay, let me go to the next one and execute the filter example. This example will execute now. <coughs> See now, foo is equal to this integer. Now I'm just trying to find uh, the modulus of three. Uh, uh, we should have 18 should be printed. So, 9 should be printed and then yeah all those which are multiple of 3 should be printed now so 18 9 24 12 and 27 and the rest all are all uh, uh, not satisfying this condition and we don't have them printed so filter so you can easily do this so uh, without using uh, the conditional statement you can go for uh, filtering okay uh, hope you understood this example so i proceed with the next Yeah. Okay. Now reduce. Okay. So map you understood, filter you understood, and one more beautiful function reduce. So reduce is really useful function for performing some computation on a list and returning the result. See if you want to perform the computation on a rolling fashion, okay, repeatedly. So then uh, this is the best function. So it applies a rolling computation to a sequential pair of values in the list. So uh, if you ask me, what's well, What is that rolling computation? So, sir, yes, sir, multi orkan computation madu tan re. Aodo, multi orkan de computation madu tae. How I'll show you. For example, say if you want to compute the product of list of integers. Say I want to uh, this you have done. So similar examples which you have already done. So say I want to compute the product of list of integers. I want to find uh, the product of all the integers in my list. So what is that I do? So normally this is how we do it. See, this is the example which is showing how you find the product of all the items in the list. So initially I have the product initialized to one. So I have the list one, two, three, four. And for num in list, I, I'm just iterating for every item on, in my list. This is how we do that. And you already know it for num in the list product is equal to product into num. What is what this loop is doing? It is doing the rolling computation. So it, it takes one item from the list, multiplies that with the current product value, gets the new product and takes the second item from the list, multiplies uh, uh, the current product with that uh, second item in the list and finds the new product. This is what is the rolling computation. So when the, the computations are like this, this some kind of a rolling computation, uh, uh, you can always do that by using uh, reduce easily. So you don't have to uh, write a for loop and uh, keep rolling it. Okay, let me execute this and uh, we'll understand later how to do it using the reduce. I hope uh, you understood what is uh, the rolling type of computation. So it's something like where uh, the result of previous yeah. iteration becomes the input to the next iteration. Okay, so, so such type of uh, computations are called as rolling computation, where the result of the previous iteration serves as the input to the next iteration. Such such uh, computations are referred to as a rolling type of computations. And here in Python, using the reduce functions, it can be done uh, very easily. So you don't have to uh, uh, write a for loop and track something like this. Okay, let me execute this basic example, which we used to do all these days normally. And later we will see how to do it using reduce.
I'll clear all this. Okay, this is normal. So one into two into three, uh, one into two is two, two into three is six, six into uh, four, 24 here to get. So 24 is the result. So this is what uh, the result of the rolling computation that is performed. Now we'll see the same how to do it using our reduce function. Just observe now. Yeah, and uh, you'll learn one more important thing here. See here. From function tools, import reduce. Reduce is a function, no doubt, because I told uh, reduce is a function which does uh, the rolling type of computations. And where is this reduce present? Reduce is a function which is present inside the module function tools. Okay. So from function tools, import reduce. So function tools is a module from this module I'm importing only the function reduce. So this function tools contains many other related functions also. So I don't want all of them. So I just want only reduce because I want to keep my program as light as possible. Now I can do it as what I can do it like this also. I can just import say just a second my system is hanged ah. tools i can do it like this import function tools what this will do this statement will import all the functions which are there in uh, the module function tools uh, right now i'm not interested in all the functions so i'm only interested in the function reduce okay now if you want to import only a specific function from the module then you can write it like this from function tools import reduce of, of that statement is clear yes, hello sir, sir. yeah now yeah, i have yeah. the list i have the list uh, with the name foo and these are my list items now i am writing it lst is equal to so this is a new list which i'm trying to create reduce okay uh, so sorry lst is a variable is equal to reduce so and as usual anonymous function lambda so observe here so this lambda uh, i'm passing two parameters x and y and then what i'm doing x plus y i, I just want to find the sum of all these elements in the list foo and, and the second argument uh, to reduce is foo it will take every item from the list okay no, not every item from the list foo what it will do initially it will take first two arguments why first two arguments first two items it will take because here I have specified x and y x and y getting so it will take 2 and 18 2 gets assigned to uh, this x and 18 gets assigned to y and what it is computing is x plus y 2 plus 18 you have the result 20 at that 20 gets assigned to what y 20 gets assigned to y and what it will do it will take the next number from the list that is 9 and it gets assigned to 8 so now uh, sorry x so x is 9 plus and the previous sum is how much 20 so 9 plus 20 29 and that gets assigned to y hope you're following yes sir yeah yes, sir. now uh, uh, y x comma y you have before the colon you understood because the the first time i want it to take how many values two values uh, first item from the list and also second item from the list that is 2 comma 18 correct okay so now uh, it, it finds like this sum of all uh, the elements and finally we have uh, the sum of all these items printed on the screen so let me execute this say sum is 139 okay the sum of all these elements so is 139 you can manually check if you want so and we did this rolling computation even without using uh, the what mm, for loop so without using the for loop we did it hmm? and uh, uh, and you, you understood now uh, from this example how to import only a specific from uh, module from the function 
and and you can also do like this say i don't want to import only this or i want to import everything which is there in the function tools module do it import function tools you just write it so it will import everything and all the functions which are available in the function tool so you can uh, use it here okay um, and uh, and let me change this to product say i want to find the product of all these things so what i'll do i'll change this plus to into okay so this is uh, the product of all these things so we got a big number clear no yes yeah i'll go to the next one so very beautiful functions these three are map filter reduce and one more uh, anonymous function lambda very beautiful functions which are available in python and and you can make effective usage of these functions even when you are performing any complex data analysis uh, problem okay so they are most uh, these functions are most widely used there in the uh, data science or the data analysis uh, problems when especially when your data size is too large okay so uh, say i have a data set of uh, uh, a very large data set and i want to do it by using uh, the for loop uh, I, I say i have 10000 items or 20000 elements now i want to find something like this sum of all those things or uh, product of all those things so then you got to iterate hmm? so instead of iteration uh, you you can just do it like this this way it is much faster okay now uh, i think uh, say a, a little bit of work to you uh, write up now, now you have understood uh, most of the things uh, write a python program to chart uh, n elements using bubble chart technique so all of you know the logic of bubble chart uh, and i want you to write the program in python uh, or implement the bubble chart logic in python and uh, i want you to chart these things and elements uh, hard coded in the program i don't want uh, you to read the elements from the keyboard uh, just take it as a list uh, hard code these elements in the program and try to sort them using the bubble sort technique so uh, let me see how you people uh, write it so just uh, it will not take uh, these are all the small programs here when you are writing in python i want you to quickly do this okay because you know now how to write uh, the for loops in python and how to do comparisons correct no uh, all these things uh, just try to uh, write your answers in the chat box so from now onward i'll uh, i'll i'll be asking you to write uh, some sample programs like this even i have the solutions with me after this because i want you people to make it try after this i'll be showing you the solution and later you can go for comparing your answers with the solution what i share uh, but don't keep quiet you know uh, make an attempt to solve this so don't wait for my solution just make an attempt because you learn by attempting you'll only learn the in and out when you make an attempt if you don't make an attempt so uh, you'll not get to know what uh, your, your uh, what is your level of understanding with respect to the python programming constructs only when you start writing by yourself you'll understand your level of understanding are you writing can i have your response please yes sir yeah yeah right. make it, make an attempt whether it is right or wrong no do nothing to worry make an attempt i'll show you the solution so you should not uh, even take more time also for this so you, you you have to complete it in 2 to 3 minutes because the logic of bubble sort is clear so you know that and uh, for loop writing for loops is also easy in python
it won't be a big program here in Python. Uh, it is hardly uh, five to six lines of code. You know, you can finish it. So let me check my chat box if somebody have responded or not. Uh, uh, even you can write using uh, the paper also if you're not good at typing uh, and if it takes more time so take uh, a paper uh, a scribble pad pen write your answers there take the photo of it and send it to me uh, put it in the chat box so you can do that also I have given these elements. Uh, uh, take these elements or any element, hard coded, or hard coded elements inside the program is also fine. Anybody finished? Oh, okay. I got uh, a few responses. Okay, for i in range n minus one, for j in range n minus i minus one. If okay, the second element is bigger than the first element. Okay, uh, you are assigning okay array of j plus one to j and array of j two uh, array of j plus one and then finally printing the array. Okay. 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 Uh, correct. I have got uh, the correct responses. Okay. Uh, so let me continue. Okay. I, I have the solution. I'll show you. Okay. I am doing it like this and uh, a few people have uh, done it uh, by assigning you know, uh, this is called as something I'll just open uh, the answer what I got in the chat box 
okay so this is uh, something called as uh, the tuple assignment you can go for assigning like this also so this also works fine you can do even without using uh, the temporary variable so this gets assigned to this and this gets assigned to this uh, no, no issues this is also correct but what i've done is using because since i've not done uh, the tuples topic yet since i've not started uh, the tuples uh, topic so i have done it using uh, the uh, temporary variable uh, let me share uh, the solution to you yeah. so i'm taking uh, uh, I'm writing it in the form of a definition and you have done without using the uh, function. Okay, and there are no issues. So I'm taking this list hard coded and then I'm calling making a call to bubble sort function and by I'm passing this list. So definition bubble sort passed and then for pass number in range, uh, I'm just finding the length of my array list uh, like this. So there is also a function built in function with the name alien and you can go for finding the length of anything. So I want to find the length of the list, you can find it. So length of the dictionary, you can find it. Length of a string, you can find it. So all these things you can do. So length of array list minus one, okay? Because uh, why we are doing minus one? Because uh, the number of passes required is one less than uh, the elements. Say here, if I have 10 elements, uh, the number of passes required is uh, nine, okay? So I'm minusing. And then I, I want to stop uh, the process. This is uh, similar. This is what the start is and this is what the stop is and this is what the step is so i want to stop uh, the execution of this for loop when uh, zero is reached okay a pass number is uh, zero and every iteration i want to decrement it by one so and then uh, nested inside this for loop i have another for loop for uh, i in range pass number okay i'm passing this pass number i'm checking uh, whether uh, the first number uh, is greater than uh, the second number if so what i'm doing i'm exchanging okay i'm taking assigning this is uh, the normal bubble set logic what you people know uh, i am doing the swapping okay so i do the swap so and, and finally so after this function is executed uh, all the past numbers are done so I, I get returned here and then printing the array list okay and uh, the two responses what i got so they are also correct now uh, uh, you people have done it without using the temporary variable so just by using the concept of tuples so now i am doing it uh, by using uh, 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 the temporary variable okay so i'll execute this okay so now we have the elements sorted elements sorted in ascending order okay and uh, similarly if you want it to be sorted in the descending order so you can also do that just uh, interchange this condition to less than uh, uh, one second for a while okay now uh, we are doing it in descending order okay so now this is in the descending order okay so now uh, let me go to the next one now Uh, what is this? Yeah, so write a Python program to short n elements using bubble short technique, but this time read the required elements from the keyboard using space as the delimiter. Okay, this is what you have to do. Earlier we add uh, the elements hard coded, hard coded in the program. Now I don't want you to 
hard code in the program instead uh, you dynamically read it from the keyboard and space as the delimiter and i've already told you Kreno, uh, how to do it using space as the delimiter you got to use the split function uh, split function if you don't uh, if you want to use space as the delimiter you don't pass anything to split by default it will take uh, space as the delimiter yeah start doing it because you know everything uh, because everything is taught uh, to you people uh, only thing is you you have to start using them now Yeah, are you people doing it? Next one, same. Logic is same. Everything what you had wrote earlier remains the same. Only thing is, uh, get the required input uh, from the keyboard uh, 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 where uh, uh, the space should be considered as the delimiter. Say, uh, please, when I ask something, uh, please do respond immediately. Say yes or no, sir, we are writing. At least that response is required for me. We are writing. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I think I got uh, the responses. Let me check. Okay, right. Okay, num is equal to index for x and input dot split. Okay, so making it as a list. Okay, so this is the only line. Okay. Enter the elements list. Okay, map you are used. Very good. Uh, and this is also correct. The upper one is also correct. Only thing is uh, the remaining logic uh, not able to find. But this is what is important for me. Good. And then enter the elements list map int comma input. Yeah, correct. Good. It's fine. Okay. Now I'll I'll go to the. Uh, I'll show you the solution. Okay. I'm using here. See, enter the list. A list is equal to. So uh, here I'm not using uh, the map. Okay. So you can also do it this way. Okay. Or you can also do it using the map. See, I can see now the answers. What you people writing are in. Uh, uh, different forms so one has used map and one so as exactly used the same way what I did now so all these things ca can be uh, done so once you understand you know what it is so the answers you know it need not be uh, unique across all uh, the students it will vary from one to the other okay so I'm happy because I'm getting the responses uh, I think this is a little uh, too small uh, for you to observe let me let me zoom it little bit so i hope you can see now so this this i have not changed anything this is same as it is uh, uh, as it was in the previous slide so enter the elements this is where a list is equal to for n in uh, input dots this okay uh, split so i'm reading from the keyboard and i'm splitting using the space as the delimiter so casting uh, uh, everything to int and then uh, making it as an item for uh, uh, the a list and then passing this a list as a parameter to bubble sort and the same bubble sort logic works okay so let me execute this okay so enter the elements i'll enter it in decreasing order 
sorry uh, i i using space as the delimiter sorry i pressed enter key enter the elements 5 4 3 2 1 i have entered all my elements using space as the delimiter so now they are uh, shorted in the ascending order okay and similarly descending order also you can do now i'll enter uh, elements in ascending order so we have them sorted in decreasing order simple thing so this is what the statement which is uh, required for me and the rest all is same okay we'll see what's there in the next one now now see this so this is again uh, one more uh, slight variation to the problem which you solved now write a proton program to short n elements using bubble short technique read the required numbers from the keyboard using comma as the delimiter in my uh, uh, current program what i did uh, space was the delimiter now i got to deal with comma as the delimiter i want you people to deal with comma as the delimiter example something like this see every elements are separated by commas i want you to read from the keyboard something like this and short them yeah so just one line of answer i require uh, you don't have to write the complete logic of because you have already written the logic of the bubble sort so uh, i just need one line uh, uh, how you read the required input from the keyboard using comma as the delimiter only that line quickly uh, put it in the chat box very good so i got the response see here uh, the split earlier when we uh, were using space as the delimiter we were not passing anything but now i want to tell can i know so use comma as the delimiter so you're passing uh, this comma inside the single quotes you got to write okay so comma will be taken as uh, the delimiter so the given input string will be split uh, into items using comma as the delimiter okay so good okay i'll show you the answer see so same thing so the comma as the delimiter and the rest all is same so earlier so we, we, we used to just leave this as blank now we are given comma as the delimiter okay now i'll copy this and everything is same enter the list of elements uh, since it is greater than let me enter say one comma two comma three comma four comma five now given so earlier we gave space as the uh, uh, delimiting character so now since uh, we are reading it uh, we say comma should be the delimiter so I've separated everything by comma and enter uh, okay what this is doing yeah shorting them in the ascending order so I have given it in ascending order itself sorry let me enter it in descending order So I'll enter 5, comma 4, comma 3, comma 2, comma 1. Now we have them uh, shorted in ascending order. Okay. Now decreasing order, one example we'll see. One, comma two, comma three, comma four, comma five. Now, if I don't give uh, the input elements using comma as the delimiter, so then the program will not uh, behave properly, okay? Because it is expecting commas as the delimiter, okay? Five, four, three, two, one, five. Hope you people understood with this, and we'll see what's there in the next. Write a Python. Oh, now this is searching. Okay. Now, till now you did sorting, uh, uh, shorting the hard coded elements in the program, shorting the elements which are read from the keyboard using space as the delimiter, and shorting the elements which are read from the keyboard using comma as the delimiter, all these things. Now, write a Python program to search an element using binary search technique. The elements hard, hard coded in the 
program but key element uh, from the keyboard so the the uh, elements you got to hard code in the program but uh, the search element you have to read it from the keyboard yeah start doing it so i hope all of you know the binary search logic also <coughs> because you have studied it in uh, semester one and uh, I, again i think uh, you have studied it in uh, uh, this algorithm design uh, lab also or algorithm design uh, course along with the space and time complexity so I'll be watching my chat box Let me check how many participants are there. So 53 attendees. I think still uh, 15 to 18 are absent. Yeah, are you people writing, implementing binary search in Python? Yes. Yeah. Same. Uh, I'll brief uh, the logic. So uh, I hope all of you uh, know this. Uh, whenever you are trying to search something using a binary search technique, uh, the first uh, thing is uh, the input condition. So the input what you give to the binary search, it must be a shorted array. Either uh, it should be shorted in ascending order or descending order. So you cannot apply the binary search technique on an unshorted array. So I hope all of you know this and uh, the logic is very simple. Uh, what you do is uh, initially you take a low pointer which will be pointing to the uh, 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 first element and I pointer which will be pointing to the last element. Uh, uh, obviously what we do, uh, we initialize low to 0 and I to n minus 1. So assuming the array indexes are starting from uh, 0. So low is initialized to 0 and i is initialized to n minus 1. And then what we do, uh, while low is less than or equal to high, so we uh, find the mid element. Now do we find the mid element uh, that is mid is equal to low plus i by 2. And then uh, we compare our search element with the mid element. So if uh, uh, it matches, then we say element is found. So in case if uh, the search key is not matching with the mid element, then we go for checking whether our search key is lesser than the mid element or greater than the mid element. So uh, if our search key, search key is lesser than the mid element, then what we do? We, we go for searching. We focus on the left half of the array and we completely ignore uh, the uh, right half of the array. So if search key is bigger than the mid element, then we uh, ignore our uh, 
uh, the left half of the array and we focus on uh, the right half of the array. So and this process we repeat it recursively so until uh, uh, low is less than or equal to i. So by the time uh, uh, this low crosses i, uh, if the element is found, correct? No, then we say element is found and we break from the loop. In case uh, uh, we repeatedly doing this work uh, uh, and and the low value crosses the i value, what does it mean? Uh, the required uh, the element which you are looking for is not found. Okay, so not found inside the uh, given uh, input string or given list and we say element is not found. This is the simple logic. So let me check in the chat box. So no answers yet. Okay, I got one answer. Uh, okay, there. I don't know where it is. Okay, enter uh, the key element. Okay, hard coded elements. One, two, three, four. Shorted one. Good, and then low is equal to a of uh, 0 and i is equal to a of no uh, i think uh, this is not correct low is equal to you should make it as 0 that's all and i is equal to uh, this a of you should not write now what it will do for i uh, it will assign this 8 okay and for low it will assign 1 now we want the index that's all low is equal to 0 and i is equal to uh, length of a minus 1 so that is correct but uh, writing it inside a of this is not proper and while low less than or equal to condition is good mid is equal to low plus i by 2 this is also fine if a of mid is equal to key okay found okay else if okay uh, if key is less than mid element you are modifying i i is equal to mid minus 1 good else uh, low is equal to mid plus 1 that is also fine search is unsuccessful good so everything is fine except this uh, yeah now you have modified it good uh, now it is correct i, I just got uh, one response uh, only one response i have received what about others are you people active yeah i got one more uh, low is equal to 0, i is equal to range list, uh, range list you are given. Okay, I think this is uh, not necessary, range list is not necessary. You can just uh, say it as len of list minus 1, that is fine. And l is than or equal to high, this is correct. Okay, okay, and here h is equal to h is equal to uh, uh, what it should be if uh, list of mid is greater than element uh, h is equal to mid minus 1 minus 1 is missing and else uh, l is equal to mid plus 1 so this is what you got to do uh, length of lists are okay and uh, do the corrections here as well okay uh, otherwise uh, this is fine okay so the changes required here update it uh, usn 18 cs 157 i don't know your name sorry uh, uh, make h is equal to mid plus sorry mid minus 1 and l is equal to uh, mid plus sorry mid minus 1 do it Okay, someone has written in the paper and sent. Okay, I'll check. I'll uh, go through all these answers. Okay, uh, I'll give a thumbs up for uh, the response. So, 
let me go to the next uh, topic good okay thanks for your response yeah I i'm showing here uh Oh, and this is I, I didn't notice this uh, you have to use two double slashes because what I require is only uh, the integral part so I don't want the fractional part so I didn't uh, observe this whether you use this operator uh, in the division uh, yeah and again this also should be double slashes double slashes and uh, uh, here also I can see only single slash so double slash is required. So CS 182 and uh, CS 157. So double slash. So even uh, uh, I have one more response, which is handwritten one. Uh, I need to zoom it. Okay, I'll check it later. Okay. Uh, can you people see my screen? No, I think. Yes, sir. No. Huh? Uh, uh, sharing is stopped. Oh, one second, one second. Okay, so this is uh, the solution. I have the solution. I, I hope you can see now. Uh, the solution is here. So binary search. Okay. One second. Yeah, it is in two uh, slides actually the solution now let me start from here so test list is equal to this is what uh, the shorted array I have taken enter the search element I'm reading from the keyboard I'm calling binary search function by passing this test list and uh, uh, passing uh, the integer value search key int of key I'm sending and the return value from binary search I'm assigning it to uh, f uh, now if f is equal to true i say element found else i say element not found here <coughs> binary search so two things are passed array list and item so first i'm initializing it to zero this is nothing but the low and last length of a list minus one so initially i'm making found as false while first is less than or equal to last and not found so this is also required and not found so two conditions are there while first less than or equal to last and not found so mid i'm finding first plus last these two slashes are necessary even the response what i got so you have written only one slash okay uh, because it gives you both for integral part and also the fractional part but what i'm interested is is only the quotient okay so midpoint so if a list of midpoint is equal to item i just say found is equal to true else if it is lesser than the mid element, I just say last is equal to mid minus 1, else first is equal to mid plus 1 and return found. So based on uh, the found value, so I'm just saying whether it is found or not found. So hope you people understood till here. So we'll stop because uh, 2 o'clock I have the lab session. So I want to finish my lunch before that. Uh, uh, thank you and we'll continue tomorrow okay and execution of this i'll do tomorrow yeah louder thank you, sir. yeah thank you thank you very much so have lunch and if you have uh, lab sessions afternoon uh, join your lab sessions okay thank you